Thank you, Joe, so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. Well, why don't you start off by telling us what the mission of Independent Living Resource Center is? Our mission is to uh, provide people with disabilities who are living in our community with assistance to eliminate barriers, both attitudinal and architectural communication, and to assist them to live the most independent life the way they want to. Now, what makes this organization unique? I think the probably the key issue of uh, an organization like ours, an independent living center, is that uh, the consumer participates fully in every part of the process of service dissemination. They come um, with whatever their need is, that becomes the goal in their independent living plan, and they work on it with whoever is, is um, assisting them so that they have not only responsibility, but they're learning the skills of getting through it. For instance, if a person's rights are denied or abridged and they need an advocate, the advocate may go with them to a meeting and may speak first, but the consumer, the person with a disability, ends up learning how to assert their rights, how to understand um, how they can be put into place and, and provided. And why is it so important to have these programs available in the community? Well, for many, many years, people with disabilities basically were considered not able. And um, the word handicap comes from years ago. It used to be people on the corner with their caps in their hands. So Interesting. Um, and, and it's a pejorative. Uh, for many, many years, people with, or probably still in many cases, people with disabilities um, grow up in a world that doesn't think they can do things. And when we grow up in that sort of setting, we internalize it. And in internalizing it, there you need to learn, to relearn or to learn for the first time that you can do things and that life is worth living and that <clears throat> people have functional differences and it doesn't matter whether you get to your job on wheels, I mean, most of us do in a car, but on wheels or on feet, exactly. Um, you get there, you do your job, it's not, it doesn't, reference um, you know what limitations other limitations you may live with well we're sitting in your offices here and we have this great wall behind us with photos of success stories people I'm sure that have benefited from your great programs what are some of the specific services that you offer can you just run those run sure, through those for us sure there are a number of them and um, and they're not exclusive I mean sort of it's other things as needed the first thing that will happen is a person contacts our office and uh, we have bilingual English Spanish bicultural individuals at the front desk and they are not receptionists they're information and referral specialists because you can't make good decisions without good information certainly true um, then they may be referred to a benefit specialist um, we have advocacy around benefits and some of the other things we have independent living skills um, training a person who may experience an accident or an illness and they get all the medical care they need they get all the rehab care they need but when they go home they still can't get the top off the peanut butter you have to change the way you do <laughs> things. So um, there's some training around that, some problem solving and so forth. We have um, uh, peer support is the primary, um, the underpinning principle of our organization sure. so that uh, a person with a disability doesn't come in and have somebody with a clipboard stand over them and say, you know, just, well, just all you have to do is here's, here's how to solve your life. Yeah. They sit down with a person who's experienced barriers, who knows the, maybe the grief of losing capacity or who has grown up never knowing uh, another uh, mode and they they have a certain they, sensitivity yeah right they, they really have been there they've right. you know that phrase that's so popular walk the walk and instead yeah, of just talking empathy, the talk for sure but they can learn attitude and em be empowered well, by that kind important. of thing and um, and we're run by a board of uh, people with disabilities. Uh, I think 80% of our board is people that identify themselves as having disabilities and 80 to 85% of staff does so. And you may not sit down with a person who has identical disability to you, but it's still a person who has this experience with barriers and people's attitudes in the community thinking, you know, well, if, you know, why would we spend our money on you? Why should we do this? Why, why, why do we have to make a ramp when stairs <laughs> will do? You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a paradigm shift for the community to include everybody. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for 
so eloquently describing <laughs> the organization. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm happy to do that. And then just to, to add on to a couple of the services that didn't get mentioned, sure. we have an assistive technology specialist. We have a sign language interpreter registry. We do work with people on whatever it is that they need to to, uh, to do in order for them to be in the community. Well, perfect. So. Those are so important. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for joining me today. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. You're on the board of the Independent Living Resource Center, right? I am. And why do you volunteer? Well, um, mainly, I mean, you oftentimes hear the phrase wanting to give back, and I suppose that's the main reason why I wanted to, to help out. But obviously, I have a disability. I wanted to, to volunteer for an organization, number one, whose philosophy I agree with, mm -hmm. and number two, that I thought I could be effective and make some valuable hopefully valuable contributions to, to their mission. And um, the ILRC, for me, fits that bill. I believe in what they are trying to do, and um, I think I've been able to help achieve some of those things. What does your independence mean to you? How does ILRC services help empower the community and yourself? Sure. Well, it, it, I mean, it means everything. Um, you know, people who don't have a disability take for granted everyday simple things. Um, from, um, I mean, from the beginning of your day, from getting out of bed to getting, um, you know, dressed to eating um, to just being independent. And you do all those things without giving any thought to them at all. <coughs> at some point in your life, there are a number of folks who then have to spend the majority of their time thinking about all of those things. How do you get out of bed? Right. Um, how am I going to prepare a meal? How am I going to transfer myself um, into an automobile? How am I going to get to an appointment? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's amazing um, how that can become the focus of, of, your, of your life. And so to, to be independent means that you can be a contributing member of society, that you're not um, proverbially kicked to the curb, but that you're still vital and um, can contribute to society. And that only uh, hopefully helps society, but it helps you feel um, good about what you're doing. I mean, it gives you purpose and it gives you a reason to, to get out of bed every day and do the things you need to do. Certainly, which kind of ties into my next question, which is why are these programs so important? And you mentioned that it's allowing people to have a more independent, mm -hmm. independent life. How can our viewers who, who are becoming more and more interested in the organization get involved? Is there a way to volunteer? Well, let's start there. Is there an opportunity to volunteer? Well, there's, there's always ways that, and well, we always appreciate help. Uh, you can go to our website, and there's opportunities there. We always appreciate people who make financial contributions to the organization. Uh, you could contact us if you're interested in being on the, on the board. I, I think a good place to start would be to learn more about what the independent living philosophy is and understand what that philosophy really is all about. It's not about just um, patting people on the head and giving them money. It's about being independent. It's about making your own choices about your own life. And part of that is, is the freedom, you might say, to make bad choices. Right. I mean, when you give, empower people to be free and make choices, they don't always necessarily do what you think they should do. But that's okay. <laughs> then again, who does, that's right? That's right. It's exactly right. So it's a, it's a bit of a different model than people might be used to with respect to helping people with disabilities. Um, Sometimes people are content to write a check mm -hmm. and put people with disabilities out of sight. Uh, we're not about that. Um, we are about making people part of the community um, in, in every respect. Um, and so we're not looking for pats on the head. Uh, we're looking for folks that want to um, increase inclusiveness. Dan, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you for your involvement in a great organization and for shedding some light on some of the areas that I'm going to bet not a lot of us think about as much as we should. Thanks. And I really appreciate the great services that the Independent Living Resource Center is doing. I know our community does as well. My pleasure. Thanks. You're watching Nonprofit Spotlight. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future nonprofit spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.